I'm Jim Trusby for the Wall Street Journal here with Hall of Fame jockey Gary Stevens. Gary rode Oxbow to a win in the Preakness Stakes and is riding Oxbow again in the Belmont. How do you see the race playing out? Well, it uh, looks like it's going to be a large field up to 15 horses. and. So I think it's going to play more like the Kentucky Derby did than the Preakness. Preakness was a smaller bunch of horses, and uh, my horse established an early lead. So, you know, we've got a short run into the first turn at Belmont Park. It is a mile and a half, but I think we're going to look uh, for all the jockeys to establish a, a good position early on. So it's going to be sort of a free-for-all uh, going into that first turn. The good thing about Oxbow is he's got good pace. There's, there's other pace in the race, but... Um, you know, I'm going in there with a, a lot of confidence in what Oxbow can achieve if he comes back like he did in the Preakness, and you know, it's his race to lose. So free for all. It's supposed to rain on Sunday. A lot of horses in the field. Looks like advantage orb. Um, I don't know if it'd be a b advantage orb or not. It's a completely different racetrack, and uh, I think he will be favored. Uh, he's you know had one loss in his career. He's undefeated here at Belmont. It's his home course, and. Uh, he gets to walk out of his own own stall that he's been camped out in for the last two years. So he's obviously he's come back, trained well going into the race. He is the Derby champ, and I'm looking for a, a good rematch with uh, Orban Oxbow. Now, so a lot of casual sports fans are thinking, no Triple Crown on the line. What, what's a selling point on watching the Belmont this weekend? It, it is the Belmont Stakes, man, and I think that, you know, with the, the way that Oxbow ran in the Preakness was a huge performance and the disappointment of Oxbow. Uh, I think that people are, are looking forward, at least myself, I, I would love for the real orb to show up. We've obviously got uh, uh, 14 other horses that we've got to worry about besides orb, but um, I'm hoping that the real orb shows up and the same horse in, in Oxbow shows up that I rode on Preakness Day and I think they'll be in for the race uh, race for the ages. So horse racing needs rivalries, but they also, you know, they were rooting for a Triple Crown this year. I mean, is, is it going to happen? Well, obviously not this year, but uh, I don't know. I, I think that uh, it will happen, whether it's going to happen in my lifetime or not, uh, I don't know. But uh, uh, I think that special animal will come along that uh, can accomplish it, but you got to remember it's just like this year's Belmont. There's new horses coming in that didn't compete in the, uh, say, the Preakness or the Belmont or the uh, Kentucky Derby, either one. So it's like having a title contender coming in that had a bye in the first two stages of a playoff and then come in fresh and fresh and dangerous. So we're dealing with new horses every time. And if it was up to me, I'd say you can't compete in the second two legs if you didn't compete in the first one. And I guarantee you we'd have a triple crown winner then. Right. Now, so but you came out of retirement in January. If luck wasn't canceled, would you be standing here talking to me about riding in the Belmont? No, I highly doubt it. I mean, I was a full-time actor at the time, and uh, we believed that, you know, it was going to gonna roll for a long time and uh, you know it was sudden that it stopped and um, it definitely gave me incentive to come back and do what I'm doing now and so far it's been a blessing I mean I win the 2013 Preakness Stakes after being away for seven uh, seven years and being back for five months uh, I wouldn't have even dreamed of that now do you still have the acting bug I it never gonna go away the same as writing never went away um, even when I retired and, and started acting and in being an analyst uh, full-time, it, it never goes away. All right, thanks, Gary.